As you know, blood work is really important, but in today's session, I wanna give you a tip when you go to get your labs drawn, whether you're getting your fasting glucose and insulin and Chem24 and your CBC that I recommend on my blood work cheat sheet that I'll link in the description below. What I recommend when you're dealing with a phlebotomist is number one, if you exercise, you're going to have good veins for the venipuncture to be more successful. So that like, I don't know if you can see on camera, but like, I, you know, when you work out, you have good veins. You start pumping your wrists like this and your fingers, you know, there's really good veins for, for phlebotomist or medical assistant or the doctor to draw your blood, which makes the whole process really, really easy. And that's why being fit is helpful. That's point number one is exercise and work out your arms. You can do blood flow restriction training, you know, for a couple months and that'll make blood draws way easier. You'll get a lot more of the veins coming to the surface of your skin. Number one. Number two, when you're getting your blood draw, request a butterfly needle. This is going to be two to three gauges smaller than most venipuncture needles. And so that's, I think, part of the reason I used to get super scared when I would get my blood drawn. I fainted several times. And this was so embarrassing. I remember I, I used to donate blood in college to make like 50 bucks or something. It was stupid. And I, I fainted pretty much every time. And I just, and they use when you're getting your blood drawn or you're donating blood, it's an 18 gauge needle. When it comes to needle terminology, the smaller the gauge, the larger the needle. And so that's why I love a, a butterfly because they're between 21 and 23 gauges. For reference point, a small subcutaneous insulin syringe is gonna be about 28 to 30 gauges. You, it depends on the size of the little subcutaneous needle. So like a diabetic, a type one diabetic, when they inject themselves with insulin, it's a very small needle. Subcutaneously, it doesn't hurt much. Um, so that's important to recognize. Uh, so you're going to relax, you're gonna chill out, you're gonna make sure that maybe you've moved your arms ahead of time, that you're physically fit and all this. And if you are scared to get your blood drawn, just request to the phlebotomist because on our blood work cheat sheet, we do recommend insulin, c to protein, your Chem24, your CBC with differential. We're gonna look at DHEA, fructosamine, uh, ApoB to ApoA1 ratios. You know, I'm gonna recommend LP little a, fibrinogen. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, iron panel. We wanna look at your thyroid panel. We wanna do a lot. Not, not excessive, but just enough, you know, so that we really can get some good biomarkers to track your health trends over time to provide more scientifically based lifestyle prescription to optimize the trends of your health. So you're going to get four or five vials. Now, if they just stick the normal 18 to 20 gauge venipuncture needle in and they're popping out the vacuum seal, I think they're called the cuvettes or the the... the the little containers that then are sent to the lab for your specimens of blood, feeling that go in and out, uh, the needle moving around in your vein, that's nauseating. So this is the trick you ask for a, but a butterfly. Now, another thing to consider is should you do your blood work fasted or fed? I think this is a really good question. I do recommend generally, if you've never done labs or it's been years since you've run your labs, that you do your first draw fasted to just get a good idea. What's your fasted insulin? What's your fasted triglycerides? What about your fasted ApoB to A1 ratio? What about your C-rat to protein? All of these biomarkers. And then once you have a good baseline, I do recommend non-fasted labs. And what does that look like? It's sort of like a lipid, a glucose load test, but we're doing, we wanna see that for lipids. We wanna see your post-meal triglycerides. It turns out that that's a really good, sensitive approximation of your overall metabolic health. And so you wanna look at what is the delta in your fasted triglycerides to your post-meal triglycerides, as well as your post-meal insulin. So you might be wondering, well, what foods do I eat, Mike? Do I eat this, do I eat that? What's your favorite go-to meal? What's your favorite lunch? What do you normally eat for lunch or dinner that you think is healthy for you? Eat that meal, head to the lab, about an hour after eating that, and ideally you would get your blood drawn between 90 and 120 minutes after eating that meal. And that would give you a good approximation of how your, bodily is how your body is handling the nutrients that you habitually eat in the post-meal window. Why does that matter? Well, atherosclerosis disease does not happen in the, in the fasted state, right? Just like people generally don't get heart attacks just sitting around. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear like someone runs and jumps or there's a major emergency and Grandpa Sam gets up and he, and he feels some, some heartache, right? And that's why we, when a cardiologist look at some, the health of someone's heart, they often perform a stress test. And so what we're doing essentially 
is a metabolic stress test when we test your labs in a non-fasted state. And so I think that's a really good uh, thing to consider. Um, and this is why when pediatricians or OBGYNs are ruling out gestational diabetes in women, they, they administer a glucose, it's a glucose tolerance test. And, and so this is gonna see how does this individual tolerate glucose? Now there's challenges and concerns with the oral glucose tolerance test, but we're also looking at fats as well. So you're gonna have a mixed meal head to the lab about an hour after uh, eating that meal and try to get the blood drawn between 90 and 120 minutes after completing, completing that meal. That will give you a good idea about how your post-meal metabolic biomarkers look. Any further questions, let me know. We have a full blood work masterclass that dives into these details. I'll put all that in the, in the description below. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.